Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Johanna Chen. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. An eve of Mother's Day gathering triggers a COVID outbreak in a Shenwan restaurant. Hong Kong's first red rainstorm warning of the year leads to the suspension of classes. And the city's economic growth forecast for this year is slashed after a dismal showing in the first quarter. Health authorities are warning of another restaurant COVID cluster after dozens of people at a Shenhuan eatery tested positive. This comes as the city marked 298 new cases today. Wen Wang reports. Sky Cuisine in Shenhuan is the city's latest COVID epicenter after 29 customers and one staff member tested positive. They were all there for dinner last Saturday, the night before Mother's Day. 250 patrons and workers who were at Sky Cuisine that night have to be tested. So far, we understand uh, they most of them are sitting on the third floor of the restaurant and um, we are still um, ascertain the distribution of the cases in the, um, in the table, the sittings. So we understand uh, maybe more than 10 tables are involved. The entire neighborhood is on high alert after 22 infections were found among Saiwan estate residents overnight. The housing complex was locked down for compulsory screening yesterday. Hong Kong University's Faculty of Medicine also caused a stir when it posted on social media that students and staff should avoid dining or engaging in mask off activities in Kennedy Town because of infection fears. In another cluster, two more cases were added to the Sun Mong Club in Hong Kong, bringing the tally from the snooker venue to six infections. There were 298 COVID cases today, 21 of which were imported. Health officials were asked whether further social distancing measures can be eased as scheduled next Thursday. Actually, we are doing daily assessment because every day is different. So um, today we got uh, several outbreaks, but what I can reassure that um, the case number are still in quite steady um, conditions. Government advisor Yun Kwok Yong also called for calm. The infectious disease expert believes over 90 percent of the population now have antibodies against COVID. But Yun said the virus is impossible to eradicate, and Hong Kongers may be asked to get a fourth shot in the autumn. Wen Wang, HKIBC. North Korea says at least six people have died from COVID one day after it imposed a nationwide lockdown to tackle its first Omicron outbreak. More than 350,000 people are feared to be infected, and health officials are investigating 18,000 new fever cases. It's believed that no COVID vaccines arrived in the country, although Pyongyang can request for doses under a global sharing program. During a visit to the Emergency Epidemic Prevention Headquarters, Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un criticized officials for failing to prevent the spread of the virus. He said containing COVID is the most important challenge facing the ruling party. Locally, classes were suspended today as the first red rainstorm warning of the year was issued. The observatory warned hikers of potential flash floods in hilly areas, with unsettled weather expected this weekend. Maisie Mock reports. Umbrellas were essential this morning as people braved the downpour to go to work. The observatory issued the first red rainstorm warning signal of the year at 4.25 a.m. An hour later, the Education Bureau suspended all morning and whole day classes. This student missed the announcement and only learned that classes were cancelled when he arrived in school. University entrance tests went ahead, but the observatory told students sitting for Diploma of Secondary Education exam papers tomorrow to check the weather reports. Many areas recorded 50 millimeters of rain in an hour this morning with Hong Kong Island and Sai Kong registering 17 millimeters. An active trough of low pressure remains in coastal waters. We expect that uh, this uh, trough low pressure will still be there 
for uh, two more days. So over the weekend, especially on Saturday and Sunday, it will still be unstable and uh, there will be occasional heavy showers and thunderstorms. Zhang urged hikers and those taking part in outdoor activities to stay alert and avoid hill streams in case of flash floods. The weather is expected to improve on Monday, while the temperature is likely to drop to 19 degrees Celsius in the morning. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Lawmakers have slammed the government over the lack of public dental care services and raised concerns over the shortage of dentists. So I am bewildered all these years. We've been asking why that's not um, been covered by public health care services. And your answer is that you are short of dentists. Now, recently, you've been trying to introduce or um, admit um, no locally trained doctors. I heard that um, dentists are not included. So can you consider legislating to bring in overseas dentists? Under Secretary for Food and Health Choi Tak Yi said Tian's request will be considered, but more time is needed for discussion. At today's panel on health services meeting, the government proposed creating an additional consultant's position under the Department of Health's dental services. But lawmakers were unenthusiastic, saying they do not see how it will help to improve dental care services. Overseas. Russia has threatened to retaliate as Finland and Sweden prepare to apply for NATO membership. The Nordic countries cited Russia's invasion of Ukraine for their move. But Moscow argued that an expanded NATO won't increase security in Europe. Sarah Wang reports. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s, Finland has employed the so-called Scandinavian model in dealing with Russia. The Nordic country, which shares a 1,300-kilometer border with its nuclear-armed neighbor, has carefully shunned the Western Defense Alliance, NATO. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February prompted Helsinki to rethink its defense strategy. Finnish President Sali Ninisto and Prime Minister Sanna Marin have vowed to apply for NATO membership within days. They believe joining the alliance can strengthen Finland's security. Their stance is heavily backed by their compatriots who fear Russian aggression. I'm, I'm sure that in the future we will one day see normal border, normal cooperation. And of course, even nowadays, our interest is to keep the border peaceful. Neighboring Sweden is set to follow suit. Moscow reacted by threatening retaliation and warned that a larger NATO will not make Europe any safer. Russian President Vladimir Putin has long begrudged NATO's eastwards expansion, which he used to partially justify the attack on Ukraine. The United States pledged to support the Nordic nations and dismissed concerns of provocations. This is President Putin who caused this. Look at the mirror. It will take months for all 30 current NATO members to agree to admit Finland and Sweden, but Europe's security framework is at the cusp of being redrawn. Sarah Wong, HKIBC. The United States has offered 150 million U.S. dollars to Asian countries to counter China's growing influence in Southeast Asia. This came as President Joe Biden welcomed eight Asian leaders to the White House for a two-day summit. The Philippines and Myanmar were missing, but it was the first time that the leaders of the other eight countries held talks in the U.S. Capitol as a group. Washington also vowed to do more on climate, maritime and public health issues in Southeast Asia. In November, Beijing pledged 1.5 billion U.S. dollars over three years to help the bloc recover from COVID. A veteran politician has been appointed Prime Minister of Sri Lanka for the sixth time in a bid to pull the country out of a political and economic quagmire. Raniel Wick Remasinghe has to quell public anger over soaring inflation and unite lawmakers. Sarah Wong reports. 
Sri Lanka's spiraling economic crisis has mired the country in a political upheaval as violent unrest forced the resignation of the Prime Minister on Monday. But the departure of Mahinda Rajapaksa, brother of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, did little to soothe public anger over skyrocketing prices for daily necessities. The central bank said the distressed Sri Lankan economy could collapse beyond redemption unless political stability is restored soon. The quagmire forced the president to replace his brother with Ranil Wickremesinghe, an opposition lawmaker and five-time former prime minister. The 73-year-old was sworn in at the beleaguered president's residence. We are facing a crisis. We have to get out of it. We have an economic action plan and we will work on it. Wickremesinghe has experience in steering the island nation out of political and economic storms and negotiating with the International Monetary Fund. He now faces the challenge of healing a fractured parliament and resolving the country's worst financial crisis in decades. Sarah Wong, HKIBC. Hong Kong has cut its economic growth forecast for the year because of a worse-than-expected performance in the first quarter. COVID was the main culprit, but external factors also played a part in a 4% contraction in the first three months. After four quarters of recovery, Hong Kong's economy contracted by 4% between January and March from a year ago. The worse-than-expected performance forced the government to lower its gross domestic product forecast for the full year. Officials now predict that growth in 2022 will range from 1 to 2 percent, sharply down from 2 to 3.5 percent as forecast in the budget in February. Private consumption declined 5.5 percent, while exports fell 4.5 percent. During the first quarter, the labor market was under severe pressure with the unemployment rate rising to 5 percent. Looking ahead, the government says global demand may continue to affect Hong Kong's exports, adding that tensions in Ukraine and volatile Sino-U.S. relations will also have an impact. But local spending is likely to rebound, thanks to the consumption voucher scheme and an improving COVID situation. We expect that if this situation can continue, probably the disruption between land transport the, the disruption to land transport between Hong Kong and the mainland may ease a little bit in the coming months. So this should uh, help uh, give some relief to, to Hong Kong's export performance. Leung noted that the deterioration in the global economic outlook will continue to constrain Hong Kong's exports in the medium term. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index ended the day up 518 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent up $10.20, Meituan up $10.60, Alibaba up $2.20. JD.com up $7.60, Tracker Fund up $0.53, cents, AIA up $0.80, cents, and BYD Company up $11.40. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euro is trading at 8.15, British pound at 9.58, and Australian dollar at 5.41. Over in the UK market, the FTSE 100 is up 119 points. The US Senate has confirmed Jerome Powell as chairman of the Federal Reserve for a second four-year term. He was endorsed by a vote of 80 to 19, showing wide cross-party support. The strong backing will help Powell battle the highest US inflation in four decades. He aims to reduce inflation with a series of interest rate increases, but warned that higher borrowing costs could threaten jobs. It was the end of the road today for a cross-harbor bus service that has been running for 30 years. Some bus enthusiasts turned up to record their last ride on New World First Bus number 301. The route, launched in the 1990s, ran between Hong Hong and Shangwan during the morning rush hours on weekdays. It was taken out of service just ahead of the opening of East Rail's cross-harbor section on Sunday. On to the weather now. 
an amber rainstorm warning is in force. Expect more heavy rain tomorrow, with temperatures ranging from 24 to 27 degrees. The bad weather will extend through Monday as the mercury drops. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11, which will be my last newscast. A special thanks to everyone on the team who supported me in the past year and eight months. To the viewers at home, thanks for watching HKIBC. Stay healthy and take care. I'm Johanna Chan. Good evening.